Hey guys, today I'm gonna to show you how to make three impressive Christmas morning breakfast pastries that are actually a cinch to make. And one of the reasons why they're so easy is because we're gonna be working with store-bought puff pastry, which during the holidays is an entertainer's best friend. Your friends and family will think you bought these pastries at a fine local bakery. They are that good. And special thanks to WeWaka for sponsoring and collaborating with me on this video. Now I have to admit, this has become my new favorite brand of puff pastry because I think it's one of the easiest to use. It comes in rolls, so it doesn't have any scoring, which means you get a nice large sheet of puff pastry to work with. It also comes with its own sheet of parchment paper that you can bake your pastries right on up to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. It bakes up so light and flaky and reminds me of true European style puff pastry, but one that I can actually get at my local supermarket. Okay, first up, let's start with the classic holiday sticky bun. But these sticky buns are about half the work of a traditional sticky bun because there's no dough to rise. And instead, we can get right to the fun part, the filling, the rolling, and the baking. Okay, so to begin, we are gonna melt four tablespoons of butter. And once it's melted, go ahead and pour it into a pitcher and pop it in the fridge for 10 minutes. We do wanna work with melted butter, but we don't want the butter to be hot because we don't wanna pour hot butter on our chilled puff pastry. While our butter is cooling down, we can mix together our filling. All you're gonna do in a small bowl is add two tablespoons of white sugar, two tablespoons of brown sugar, a half a teaspoon of ground cinnamon, and two teaspoons of orange zest. I always love to add orange zest to sticky buns because sticky buns are pretty sweet, but by adding the orange, it really adds a nice freshness to them and makes them feel kind of Christmassy too. I just love having that orange zest in them. And then at this point, we're gonna roll out our puff pastry. And this is another thing that I like about this brand of puff pastry, is the fact that it's sold in the refrigerator aisle and not the freezer. So you don't have to wait for it to thaw before you can work with it. It's always ready to go when you are. And then at this stage, you're gonna take your cooled butter and spoon it all over the puff pastry. And then take your filling and sprinkle it all over the top. And then you can sprinkle the raisin and nut mixture on top of that. See how easy? Now it's all ready to roll up. So starting from the short end, you're going to roll it up pretty tightly. You wanna make sure you have a firm grip on it away from you. And then you wanna to continue to roll it until your log is seam side down. Okay, at this stage you have two ways to go. You can either use a jumbo style muffin tin and get six sticky buns, or you can use a standard size muffin tin and get eight. What I actually like to do is double this recipe and do six large ones and eight mini ones, and then you have a platter that's really great for grown-ups and kids. Just make sure your muffin tins have been sprayed with baking spray beforehand, and that way your sticky bun will pop right out. So for the jumbo, I like to cut the log in half and then cut each half in thirds. And then you can go ahead and place your slices in the muffin tin. And then for the mini sticky buns, go ahead and cut your log in half and then cut each half in fourths. And that'll give you eight equal pieces. Now at this stage, you could cover both of these with a little bit of foil loosely and pop them in your fridge overnight. And then all you would have to do the next morning is pop them in the oven and bake. Then when it does come time to bake, you're gonna place them in a 425 degree Fahrenheit oven for about 20 to 25 minutes, just until they're puffed up and golden brown. Now, meanwhile, when they're in the oven, I do like to create a little extra sticky sauce that you can use to spoon over your sticky buns once they're baked. You could just use it just like this, but I mean, it is the holidays and who doesn't like a dripping, oozy sticky bun? <laughs> so I find it's worth making a little extra sauce for the side. So in a small saucepan, you're going to add four tablespoons of butter. Once it's melted, you wanna add two tablespoons of white sugar and two tablespoons of brown sugar and a half a teaspoon of ground cinnamon. And go ahead and stir that up with a whisk and allow the sugar to start to melt. And it'll start to get sticky and bubbly and start to caramelize. Once it gets to that stage, and you'll see it'll start to thicken as well, then you wanna add two tablespoons of fresh orange juice and whisk that together. And then it'll thin out and replicate kind of a sticky sauce. If you're serving these right away, you can just leave it there on your cooktop in the saucepan. But if you wanted to get this done the day before, you absolutely could. Just transfer it to a microwave-safe pitcher and then zap it in the microwave for about 30 seconds. 
Then when the sticky buns are done, you don't want them to sit in the tins too long or they'll be harder to take out. <laughs> so I say give them like two minutes and then go ahead and place them on a platter and then go in with your sticky sauce and just drizzle the tops of them. And you'll see the sticky sauce will make them nice and shiny and sticky. And when you cut into these sticky buns, you will see how light and flaky they are, loaded with all that cinnamon and the raisins and the pecans. It just screams Christmas morning and was so much easier to make than traditional sticky buns. Okay, next up, I also like to have something savory, especially for a brunch. So I'm gonna show you how to make some really easy mini ham and cheese croissants, which are quite delicious. So to begin, we're gonna be working with some Swiss cheese. You wanna look for the Swiss cheese that's typically used for sandwiches because it's actually a square, which is gonna help us turn them into triangles. And we're gonna be looking for eight slices of cheese, so you'll end up with 16 different triangles. Then you're gonna take eight slices of black forest ham and cut that in half. And then you can set that aside. So we're gonna roll out the puff pastry and keep it on the parchment paper. I also love that you don't have to use any flour when you're working with it, so there's less mess to clean up. Then here's how we wanna cut this in order to make our little croissants. You wanna cut it in half and then cut each half in halves. And now you have four strips. Then we're gonna cut our four strips in half. Then we're gonna cut down the diagonal to create triangles, and then we'll have 16 triangles. Then you can transfer this parchment paper to a cookie sheet because we're gonna be baking these on the parchment paper. Then take a triangle of puff pastry and orient it so the pointy side is facing away from you, and then take one of your triangles of cheese and line it up. Then you can take a piece of the ham and place it on the straight edge that's facing you. Then you're gonna roll up these triangles away from you, and you'll see it'll form a little crescent. And then you can reposition them all so they each have enough room to bake because they will expand a little bit. And then the final step, which is kind of critical, is to brush each one with a little bit of egg wash. Not only will that hold the crescent roll together so that it doesn't open up in the oven, but it also will create the most beautiful shine to them, which really makes them look like elegant pastries. Now at this stage, if you wanted to get these done the night before, I would cover them loosely with foil and pop them in the fridge. Then moments before you're ready to bake them, you can go ahead and brush each one with the egg wash. Then you're gonna bake these at 425 degrees Fahrenheit for 25 to 30 minutes, just until they're beautifully puffed up and golden brown. Then you can pile these on a large platter and they make such a statement. The combination of the ham and the cheese and the pastry, it's just the perfect little nibble to serve for a Christmas morning brunch. Okay, next up, I think it's really great to round out the flavors with a fruit pastry. And you will love how beautiful and delicious these little French style apple pastries are. And they're super simple to make. So for this recipe, we're gonna be working with gala apples because they're nice and light and sweet and they bake up really quickly. So I like to use the smaller size galas because the size of them works out perfectly for the size of our pastry. So once you get them all peeled, you wanna slice off what I call the apple cheeks. So if you just slice the apple, you'll see, you'll create kind of like a half circle. And you wanna do that on each side. You can slice off the other sides and you'll be left with a square core and you can use those for snacking, but I think you'll find the larger size works best for the pastry. Then you're gonna take your apple and put it on your cutting board, cut side down and slice it very thinly. And this will help the apples cook up a lot quicker if they're sliced thinly. And keep them intact because this is what's gonna create sort of the beautiful whole apple design. Then we're gonna roll out our puff pastry onto a cutting board and keep it on the parchment paper. And then you're gonna cut it into three strips and then cut those strips into squares. And you'll end up with nine squares. And then you wanna brush some egg wash around the perimeter of each square. And then in the center of each square, we're gonna be using some unsweetened applesauce. And then you can go ahead and place your little apple in the center. And we'll sort of swish down the applesauce, but that's okay. <laughs> because now we are going to take the corners of each of the pastry and bring them to the center and brush that with some egg wash to adhere it. Now they're actually not gonna stay this way in the oven. As they bake, they'll come apart a little bit, but that's part of the beauty of the design because you'll end up with a square pastry that has the little corners turned up, which I think just gives it a nice elegant touch. Then you wanna place your pastries in a 425 degree Fahrenheit oven and you're gonna bake for 25 minutes. Then while your pastries are baking, you can melt a quarter cup of apple jelly in a saucepan just until it's liquefied 
And then once the pastries are done, take them out and let them sit on the baking sheet and then brush each one with the apple jelly. So you wanna get the apple and the pastry and it'll create a really beautiful shiny surface. And if you let them cool for about five minutes, it will set the jelly and then you can also dust them with the powdered sugar just to create a nice snowy holiday look. And you can place them on a platter and bring them to the table. And you'll see when you cut into them, it's such a great combination between the flakiness of the puff pastry, that warm applesauce below, and of course, those tender apples. It is a fantastic little addition to our trio of pastries. Now, I certainly don't expect you to make all of these pastries, <laughs> although you could if you have a huge crowd coming, um, but I think one or two would be such a great way to kick off your holiday brunch. And special thanks to WeWaka for sponsoring and collaborating with me on this video. You can visit wewaka.us for more information on where you can find this product near you, and I will see you guys back here next time. Until then, bye.